Hi guys, this is Brian, KC0RJX, and today I wanted to show how I managed to use remote control crossband repeat on this Kenwood TMD710 radio. Um, I'll show you the memory settings that I use and how I control it from another HT. So on this radio, I've got a programmed memory setting of number 5 that I use for remote controlling. So let me push PM button number 5 reboots the radio and it sets uh, uh, some standard frequencies that I'm going to use for my remote control. Uh, I chose 445.1 which I think is a valid frequency for remote control and for um, crossband repeat input. So let me show you the memory settings that I've got on this mode. So under repeater um, I don't have it IDing um, but I do have the repeater mode is crossband and then in the aux menu, uh, looks like it's 920 something. Uh, yeah, I have a remote ID set to a three digit code, 042 for my case, and I have remote answer back turned on. So when I have that turned on, uh, the radio sends back my code of 042 to the controlling radio, uh, and then that, that, that lets me know that it, uh, it received my my signal or receive my uh, action. I'm going to escape out of there. So um, I'm, this is my input frequency and this is the side of the radio that I'm controlling. So I need to switch it into remote control mode now and you do that by holding the rev button down and power at the same time. So I'm going to hold down. Okay, so it's in remote control mode right now and I can tell that the control frequencies or control side is uh, is blinking. And I can't do anything else on the radio. You know, everything is kind of disabled in remote control mode. So my HT, I've got a Kenwood HT, uh, TF, uh, THF6 is my uh, HT. So I can send the that three-digit code of 042 um, to start remote controlling this. So the sequence to access the uh, remote control is A, and then my case 042, and then pound. So we should hear uh, it answer back when I do that. So let's see if I can demonstrate that here. So if I, let me first ID KC0RJX testing. So if I do A042 pound. Okay. So it, it uh, tells me the, the three digit tones that it comes back, tells me that it received my command. All right, so maybe if I hold it like that. All right, so now I'm accessing the radio. So when I sent A042 pound, um, I'm uh, in access mode. So now I can change the memory frequencies on that control side up and down um, by hitting pound and star. You see the memory changes there. And I can, and so it received my code, and it sent me my tone, tones back. Uh, so the manual said that uh, in order to go into crossband repeat mode, it said to uh, type C. And I never really got that to work. I had to type C and then A pound in order to enable crossband repeat and then disconnect from remote, remote control. Uh, so let me demonstrate that here. First I'm going to switch into VFO mode and go to some other frequency. So pushing A, 8. Uh, sorry, 8 goes into VFO mode, and now I can push in A14652.5. Alright, so I can control the uh, frequencies there, and then the up and down, I'm able to control that. And, nope, here's my tone. And it still has tone enabled there with the T, so I need to turn tone off. And I can do that with the number five key. Okay, so now I I know that I've switched my radio to the uh, the right uh, frequency that I want to control for crossband. So I now to turn repeater mode on. It's C A pound C A pound. Okay, so I heard my tone. Uh, so the PTT light there is blinking. So now it should be in crossband repeat mode. Yep, so both sides are 
are active. Now I can see the left receiving and the right transmitting KC0 RJX testing. There we go. And since I hit a pound, I'm, I'm, I've closed access to the radio, so I can hit any tones now and it's not going to do anything. In order to turn off crossband repeat mode, I need to send the connect uh, string and then pound D to disconnect. So I'm going to do that here. A, zero, four, two, pound, D. There we go, so I heard that. And the PTT light is no longer flashing, so now I'm back into regular remote control mode. So that was something that the manual describes as just hitting C to connect and D to disconnect. Uh, but it never seemed to work for me, and this is the way I learned how to do it. And then another trick that I I, uh, I started using was I'm, I saved off some of the codes and some of the frequencies that I might use on, on a handy cheat sheet here that I'll put onto the onto the channel. And I saved this string so that if I'm remote controlling this radio, I could end up, you know, typing in a frequency that it doesn't recognize and, and I won't, it won't actually know where it's listening on. So if I go back to a known good state and I can start over again, uh, I think that's going to make it easier for me to operate. So um, if I go back to memory setting 000 and turn off the tones and go back to low power, then I know that's my, uh, that's my state that I can revert back to. And so I can do that, I save that on my cheat sheet here, is going to memory mode with 9, and then A000, and 4. Okay, so it heard me. So that means 9 changes into memory mode 000, is to go to my, uh, my first channel saved, uh, and then 4 would turn off any tones uh, if I had any active. So if I had CTCSS on or DS, uh, DCS on, anything like that, um, the number 4 command would turn off all of those tones. It seems like 4, 5, and 6 turns off those tones regardless of how you set them. So now I know I'm, I'm back where uh, in a known good state. Um, so I can hit 8 to go back to VFO to receive that. Now if I want to go to somewhere else I can dial in that frequency with A, A, 1, 4, 6, 5, 3, 5. Alright, heard me there. And then I want to turn tones on, let's say. So that's 2. So tone got turned on. Alright, and in order to set a tone you can do that remotely too. Uh, so I chose 192.8 Hertz is a typical tone in my area. And in the, I believe it was the manual that told me that code number 32 was the tone number to use for 192.8 hertz. So to change tones, it's BA and then the two digit code of the tone that you want. So in my case, BA32 should set the tone to be 192.8 hertz. So BA32, there you go. So on the screen of the Kenwood, it uh, flashed 192.8, so I can show that here. Uh, code number 13 is 100 hertz, is another code that is in my area. So if I say B A 1 3, there we go, I received it, so it should set the tone to 100. If I do that again, B A, you can see it's 100 now, 13. Okay. I also wanted to show, I forgot to show how I can save some of those tones in my HT uh, so that I don't have to fumble with the keypad. Um, so this particular HD can save uh, some, it can store some DTMF tone sequences in it. So I decided to add some in there. So I've got my remote code of uh, the first memory save was, I called remote code and it just sends in my connect string. And I also saved one for a crossband on. And that sends the disconnect, the connect, and then turn crossband repeat on and disconnect. So it saves me from typing all that stuff. And then one for crossband off. So that connects with the three digit code, turns crossband off, disconnects and connects. I think that was the, because I'm sending the tone so quickly, I think I had to add a disconnect and a connect there. And then I also have a revert state, so 
I can disconnect and connect and then go back to memory memory number 000, zero, zero uh, so that I know I make it back to that known good state. So those are three handy codes that I've put into this Kenwood and I can show that I can demonstrate that here. So let me uh, back out of there. Let me quickly ID KC0 RJX testing. So if I transmit and push the menu button on this one, there we go. So I transmit and I push the menu button and inactivate the the saved tones. So I'm connected now, and now I can go to crossband on. Yep. So you can see crossband is uh, turned on there. The PTT button is is blinking. I need that one. Yep, I can see it's uh, transmitting over there. KC0 RJX testing. All right, and to disconnect crossband, I transmit, push the button. Let's go to X band off. There we go. So now it turned crossband off for me really quickly. And I can also use the revert to go back to memory channel zero low power and no tones. Yeah, so memory channel zero, no tones and low power. So having a radio that can save DTMF sequences uh, is pretty handy. So you don't have to do all that stuff manually. Cross band on. Cross band off. Pretty handy. Pretty cool stuff. All right, and then this is a cheat sheet that I had made for myself. I just printed this out in, in a Google Doc. So it's some of the uh, the codes that I learned from the manual and some of the tricks that I learned with turning crossband repeat on and off and some of the common frequencies or uh, common tones that I might need to use and then that uh, reverting mode you know, to get back to an ungood state. And I can copy and paste this into the into the video too. So thanks for watching.